say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Hello, Mrs. Farmer. Hello, how, how did you? you get here? I smell food. I came up. Hey, wait a minute. What? That's my shirt. I know, but it didn't fit you. It fits me better than you, I think. It was a little tight on you. That was one of my favorite shirts, to tell the truth. Thank you. I like it. Is it a shrink up or something? Yeah, and it fits me perfect now. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, no, that is my shirt, though, right? I think it is. <laughs> shirt thief. You know what? Sometimes you just feel like good home cooking. I'm, yeah. And this is simple stuff today, but some really, 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 really good stuff. I'm going to do pork chops, mm -hmm. just a basic pork chop with a white gravy. She's the queen of gravy. I'm going to show you how to get the perfect pork chops every time, bone in. We've got some sides that are just outstanding. We do. The granddaughters, of course, all kids love mac and cheese, but this is kind of special. This their is their favorite. favorite. And I'm going to do a side that I could eat the whole thing. It's not, it's kind of too rich to be the whole main dish. Right. But man, oh man, it's going to be delicious. good. That being said, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is a vast area. It's not just the kitchen per se. Right. It's the things leading up to the kitchen. When you think country kitchen, the things that came into the country kitchen, a hundred years ago, 75 years ago, were grown on the farm. Mm -hmm. It was caught, raised, mm -hmm. hunted. So we're really doing as much as we can on a small piece of property. And as we go about bringing our food in, we're gonna show you the outlying areas of the kitchen. Everything eventually comes mm -hmm. to the kitchen. But you think about fishing. Right. What a great way, when you're, when you're really catching a lot of fish, mm -hmm. what a great way to take a quantity of them, clean them, put them in the freezer, for future protein. Right. Now, not too long ago, I had a fellow in here from UK. I remember. He's from the extension office. Right. Those people have more knowledge mm -hmm. than they know what to do with. That's right. So what do you do when you have more than anything than you need? You share it with others. That's right. And that's what John Strang does, S-T-R-A-N-G. So I told him, I said, I'd like to bring some more trees in. Right. He said, it's not just as simple as going to the store or going somewhere and, and purchasing an apple tree and setting it out. So he brought a tree in, and we're gonna talk about planting that tree on your small farm, in your yard. Very small amount of space it takes to get a bunch of apples that we can prepare and can or store. Apple pie, uh, apple, yum, yeah. apple there's, so, there's so many things yeah. you can do with apples. Apple cake. Yeah, and if we <laughs> ever dig our... Root cellar. You can store those in there and they will last. Yeah. So we're going to talk about planting a fruit tree. It's not just as easy as you think. Really? Because once you put it in the ground, there are several things to consider. And I could tell you, but I'd much rather John tell you. So here's John Strang on planting an apple tree. All right, we have John Strang out again. Yeah. Nice to see you again on this beautiful day. We talked last year. You were up in a pear tree about mm -hmm. 30 feet. Yeah. You scurried up there like a squirrel. We are up here on the hill. We talked about last year, you kind of want to be up a little bit. Why, is, why do we pick this location? Well, this is high, and we're about to get a major freeze coming up. <laughs> oh, and, boy. Uh, when we have a freeze, it doesn't necessarily kill the trees. It kills the flowers on the tree, and you lose the crop for that year. So right. getting it up high, when we have a radiation freeze, if we're up high, we're in that area where it's a little warmer as opposed to down in a low area. Cold air is much heavier, it sinks down into the low areas, and if your trees are down there, they're gonna be frosted uh, much more frequently, and you'll lose your crop. Well, we've got a, a list of uh, home, recommended home fruit varieties that people can find. We've got fertility guidelines, if you'll find nursery source lists and everything else, that you can locate them with mail order nurseries. Now, when you're looking for fruit trees, there are some varieties that grow a lot better than others. Now, 
A lot of people go to the local nursery, got this at a local nursery. This is a golden delicious tree right here. That one does pretty well for us in Kentucky, but okay. the nurseries sell varieties that people know, not necessarily ones that look, that do well for us. If you get disease resistant apple trees, you can get apples that have resistance to fire blight, cedar apple rust, powdery mildew and apple scab. It doesn't eliminate your spray program because we've still got insects out there, but it makes it a lot easier for a homeowner to grow fruit. So we're looking at varieties like Enterprise and Wine Crisp and Liberty. Sundance is another yellow one that does really well. So we have, uh, no, no, I can't say we, you dug a okay. hole here. You pointed out what I already knew. We got a lot of clay. Well, clay is just soil with a real small particle size. It hold nutri holds nutrients very well, but it dries out very slowly. You know, you need to do a soil test, adjust the pH to about 6.5, and get your phosphorus and potassium and magnesium incorporated into the soil. If you don't do that, you need to poke some holes around the tree and drop it in, because that's mm -hmm. the only way it's going to get down into the root zone. So getting this tree off to a good start is very important. After that, all we apply on an annual basis is nitrogen, pretty much. Hmm. We like to have a nice deep soil uh, something that's three feet deep or so, so you've got water holding capacity to size the fruit up. And a lot of people don't know that if you dial 1-800-JOHN-STRANG, dig a hole, <laughs> he'll come to your house for free. <laughs> <laughs> He's oh, the Johnny man. Appleseed of the... Of the <laughs> well, Johnny Appleseed was in our area years ago. No kidding. He was a pioneer. He walked around and spread a lot of apple seeds around, and it got a lot of apples growing in the in the United States and in Kentucky in particular. What was his motivation to do so? Well, apples are not native to the United States. They originated in Kazakhstan, and so uh, they were brought over here. A lot of the fruit that we grow have been brought over from other countries, peaches and pears and apples. The pioneers were interested in apples. You know, they didn't have all the, the fruit and the produce that we have now available to them. So apples were one of their mainstays, and they used a lot of apples to make hard cider. You can see that tree hasn't rooted. It's starting to throw a few little roots out, but that ball wouldn't stay together. So we're going to set this in the hole, and I dug that hole a little deeper than I need it. When you plant a tree, a lot of people, this is a heavy clay soil, they'll say, well, I'm going to bring some really good soil and put that in around the tree to get it off to a good start. Not a good idea. This hmm. is a heavy clay soil. You bring soil up from down the creek bed, put it in there. <clears throat> this makes a flower pot, and it's liable to drown your tree. So you want to put that tree in to the soil that it was growing in to force those roots. Now this is the wrong time to plant this tree. This soil is way too wet. What is the ideal time if you if you had a situation and a time that that is the best, what would that be? Uh, that would be uh, November and pear trees and tart cherry trees. The other ones are typically planted in the spring, but that will maximize the growth on that tree. Now that tree is set wrong. We've got a graft union on this tree, and it's right here. That's where this tree was budded. We need to have that graft union above ground. Pretty well set. Now, once we planted that tree, we want to straighten it out, and we want to water it in good. We need to settle that soil around the roots. Now, we need to fertilize that tree. And we want to put on about a quarter pound of this 33% nitrogen material. We're gonna put on about half of this. We just sprinkle this around the tree. That The rain will take this nitrogen in. That's why we're putting nitrogen in on an annual basis. We need to do something to keep the rabbits off of this oh, tree. Man, I got, got the rabbits too. You've got two choices. You can put one of these spiral guards on that's white, or I like hardware cloth. And uh, this, you can get the spray material in much easier. Well, we don't want any branches lower than about 18 inches to the ground. So we've got about four good limbs here. They're not really well spread out around the tree, but we'll go with these. I'm going to tip these just lightly. This will cause them to start branching out down here. When we prune apple trees, we prune them to make them structurally strong. These are nice wide branch angles. These are strong limbs. They'll support a good fruit load. This is not. This is a real narrow branch angle here. That one's not good. That one's not good. That one's not too bad, but I'm going to force some more limbs down about right here. And so we're going to head this tree. Uh, you can put spreaders in the, in the tree if you want to spread them out a little bit. We like to have about a 65 degree angle coming off the trunk. That reduces the vigor of the limb, encourages spur development, which is 
formation of flower buds. Apples produce their fruit on spurs. So that's it. We're, we're ready for some warm temperatures. <laughs> this is going to give me something to look forward to and something to watch out for. And if I have any issues, I'll probably call you. And, okay. and, and I thank you so much for your time and your years of experience that really helped me out because I know nothing about this. That's what we're there for anytime. Well, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. This is one of my favorite things in the world. I'm crying from the onions. The onions oh, are good strong. Onions. You know what? Ooh. Just to get those out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and dump these. This is one medium onion. I'm going to go ahead and get those sautéing. I'll put those in a little butter. This is my cowboy beans. You might do use different. A lot of times I'll, I'll use the 15 bean blend. Right. And this is dry. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you have to put those on the stove, boil them, bring them to a boil, then let them set for an hour before you start the actual cooking process. Mm -hmm. It's a three or four hour process. I'm going to slim your process down by going to canned beans. Now what I always look for, always, is a non-BPA liner. I'm very specific about this. That's just me. Non-BPA liner. Okay. I am getting my onions going here. What I'm going to do is I'm take some smoked sausage and I'm going to cut those up into pieces about like this. You know what's funny is I've spent a lot of money on knives. I got this one. If you look at that knife, that's old. It is old. We got that from a lady who was selling a bunch of her stuff. She was moving. I didn't really look at it. I said, that looks like a pretty good knife. Didn't pay attention to it. Five bucks. Best knife holds the best edge. It's probably made out of an old springboard. Gosh, she only knows. Bone handles. Wasn't that her it's, dad's it's probably, favorite knife? He used it forever. It's probably over 100 years old. Yeah. So I'm going to take these sausages up. You talk about good. This is the smell that comes off of this and the onions while they cook. I'm just going to brown this a little bit to kind of release and open up that flavor coming off of these sausages that goes into the beans. Yum. Wonderful, wonderful. And you know what? If you don't have any of these, you can put brats or hot dogs, whatever you want in here. And we open up our, our hamburger. That's right. It came from our cow. That's the best ever. Now, I would have used venison for this had we not already used our venison. Right. So we're going to take our smoked sausage and our onions. We're going to dump them into a bowl. Then we're going to brown our ground beef. And I don't want it to be tiny little pieces. I'm going to have some, some chunks, chunks to eat. some yeah. small chunks. While that's going, we're going to take our lima beans. Take about 15 ounces of those. Then we're going to come back with our butter beans. I love butter beans. Those are good. They are good. I remember having those every Sunday. Kidney beans. Yum. And if you like some of your favorite pork and beans, they already have a seasoning in them. It's got a little bit of peppers in them already. Yum. You can come back with any kind of mixed beans that you want. There's a few pinto beans. So any kind of beans you want. Any kind of beans you want. Those are my, that's my favorite combination. We're going to take that and mix those all up. A third of a cup of my barbecue sauce. That's good barbecue sauce. I'm going to take my dry rub. That's delicious too. Over the years, I've kind of come up with my own stuff. I'm going to mix that up a little bit. Brown sugar, about a third of a cup. A little bit of salt. We don't need much. And just a little bit, just another boost of black pepper, not much. Probably a tablespoon and a half of mustard. It already smells delicious. Yes, it does. It's a little bit of grease. That makes you it good. What? That makes it good. Just a little bit won't hurt you. Yeah. You want this uh, mixed? Dump it in the crock pot. And I would say four, four and a half, five hours. Man, you are good to go. Wait till you see it bubbling. Oh, all that goodness. Go ahead. You want to dump it? Yep. Good? I'm, I'm going to cook this on high. If you're, if you're around, watch it, look it, stir it. You're going to see that it goes fairly quickly. And those juices come up. Oh, yeah, I'm man. looking forward to it. Delicious. First thing we're going to do, we just took some ham, left over ham, cubed it. We're just going to brown that a little bit. Yeah, got to have a little ham in your mac and cheese. Now, this is the grandbabies, one of their favorite recipes. In fact, we got in the book as Taryn and Natalie's favorite. It's a book one. This is really, really really delicious. We're just going to brown that a little bit, release some of that flavor. Yeah. What's the next step? Is that's brown and then we actually need to melt us a stick of butter also. Okay. So we can actually throw that in if you'd like. A little melt. Yeah. I've already cooked noodles. What I did was I took macaroni noodles. You could probably use whatever you want, but I took a cup and a half of uncooked, which gives you three. That ends up doubling itself. Mm -hmm. So we got three cups. And those are already cooked, pre-cooked. Just kind of mix those up a little bit. 
Makes it a little easier. I see you used your uh, Thai food container. I do like that, <laughs> yeah. It's perfect. Perfect for containers. We're going to put a whole pack of cream cheese in here. I got no problem with that. I know. All right, my ham was pretty much sufficiently browned a while back. Mm -hmm. So we got our butter in here, but I'm going to put I'm going to go ahead. You can, you know, this has gotten soft, but I think we need to melt it down a little bit. And just chop that up. And while you're doing that, we also have a whole pack of Colby Jack Yum. shredded. And we don't need to worry about melting that down. We're going to pour that in with the macaroni. A whole bag. This is lots of cheese. I've already sprayed this pan, so it's ready. Okay. So it won't stick. That's actually looking pretty good. Okay. We're going to take that and we're going to dump it in with the noodles and the cheese and we're going to stir that all up together. Just to get it, your ham's going to have some, but just to have a little smoke flavor. Just Yum. a little hickory smoke flavor in there. Just a drop or five or twelve. Mm -hmm. Or thirteen. A little salt. Don't need too much. A little garlic. And now we're going to add half a cup of milk. How's that look? Looks, Looks good already, doesn't delicious. it? Delicious. All right. Now I'm going to dump this into this pan, and we're going to top it with mozzarella. A whole pack of mozzarella, also. All right. See how this is this size dish? It kind of fits in there perfect. What we did. All right, we're going to push all this macaroni down. And if you want to grab me that mozzarella, because okay. we need more cheese. We do need more cheese. And this will give it a nice when we cook this. We're going to cook it at 350 for 45 minutes. And this will make a nice brown crusty top. That's the great thing I like about this. When this is done, it's brown on the top. Yeah. And you can cut you out a big section. And the bottom of it, it's, it's almost like the inside is so plush and cheesy, but there's like a crust, Crispy. almost a crust around it. It's absolutely, it's probably, probably the best macaroni and cheese you'll ever have. Good job, girls. And you, is this got in enough the cheese? Oven. Enough cheese? Yeah, perfect. All right, I'm going to throw that in the oven. And it's got to cook 45 minutes and hopefully. 350 degrees. Yep. Gotcha. We'll, we'll eat. All right, now we render our own lard. It's delicious. You can do this too. You can do this in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Take a look back at what we did here. It's so simple. Go back to, I'm not, we usually do this later in the show, but go to timformerscountrykitchen.com. If you hear us talking about anything, more than likely we've already done it on the show, and you can right. go back and look at that. You can render your own lard. You don't have to have a big pot outside. You can do it over your stove if you like. You end up with lard. Today we're going to take a little bit of lard, which we've already melted in this pan. So we're going to take our skillet and we're going to get it fairly hot because we want to get a good brown. There's nothing better than a good browned pork chop. Yeah. Now these are bone in. We know where they came from. We're going to salt and pepper those profusely to the amount that suits you or the amount that you're supposed to do according to doctor's orders. Okay, while we're getting these nice and brown, I'm going to read a question from Jim Burton. Really enjoy watching your show. Can you show us more around your farm? I would like to see more day-to-day -day operations like raising your livestock for us beginners. You know, we hear all the time, folks that are watching the show, and this is such a compliment, say, hey, because of your show, we latched another calf onto our, our cow. Right. Or we bought sheep, now we need a dog. Is that not yeah, cool? that is. The people are trying that. They're being self-sufficient. Because Jim asked for it, let's, let's do an update. Sometimes we forget to be specific. Here's what's going on on the farm right now. The lambs are getting big. Right. It's going to be time to kind of do what we got to do with the little boys. That's right. they got a ways to go. they got about a year before they'll be ready to take. Mm -hmm. Our calves just went in. Now, we raise our calves. A lot of people raise them to 11, 1,200 pounds. Our calves were still on milk, mm -hmm. still on the best hay that we could find. They're starting to get some stuff from the field, and they are healthy looking. Now again, Maybelle is a brown Swiss. She was bred, and here's a picture of her boyfriend. Big Angus, Apex was his Apex, name. Apex, that's right, Apex. That Todd brought in, and that's a prize bull. Yeah. We expect the Angus brown Swiss mix was probably 750 to 800 pounds. He was a, he was a, the Jersey, and the reason why you can buy them so cheap, especially a male when they're younger, and we latch that on to the brown Maybelle. Swiss as well, is they don't have that big, thick frame, but the meat on them is absolutely wonderful. Right. So he is probably going to weigh in at a little over 600 pounds. So we're going to do some comparison between the, the, the Jersey and the Angus. And I'm looking very forward to that. So that's what's going around the farm right now. It's kind of quiet other than the guinea. Yeah, still kind of crazy. Thanks for that. See what that tastes like. <laughs> I think he needs a girlfriend, maybe. I think he does. I think he'll calm down once yeah, he gets a girlfriend. A girlfriend. Now these pork chops, the, the key is, is to get them nice and hot and nice and brown. Now, once we get them like we like them, we're going to set them aside. Up here close to where it's still warm. we got a little half and half here. That's what we're going to use. Let's put a little bit in here, maybe about a quarter of a cup. 
So we're going to take our whisk and you're going to take your cornstarch, probably about a half a tablespoon of cornstarch, half a tablespoon of flour. And you're going to mix into that and just add that. Oh, Yummy. and that's going to make as long the best as you got, gravy. As long as you got grease from any kind we of meat, got it. it's yum. And in real time, you saw that gravy come together. Look, Look at that. That's how good beautiful. that looks. It's perfect. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Now we're going to plate all this wonderful stuff up. Nikki, if you want to grab that macaroni and cheese out of the oven. All right. Pork chops. Beautiful. When it comes to pork chops, you have got to have your gravy. Yes, you do. So. You want to do our gravy? Look at that gravy. It's perfect. And you saw Yum. it happen in real time. This is not a long, drawn-out process. This is good country gravy. Let's dip some of this. Look how good that looks. Oh, it's, it looks almost too beautiful to mess with. Look at that. Look what this oh, looks yum. like coming out. Look at that top, nice and crispy and oh, cheesy. Oh, are you kidding me? And the ham. Now, that's mm. country mm. cooking mm. right there. So just look at that. Look at that. Look at the beauty That's of amazing. all that. Universal, I, just, I can't stand it. I've been smelling these cook all day. Wow. Isn't that delicious? Mm. That's good. I like your burger and your mm. sausage in there. That's so sweet. It's delicious. Tire pork chops. Cut me a little piece here. How is it? That's pork heaven. Mm. Wow. I like it with the gravy. Wow. <laughs> Some mac and cheese. Now this is crisp on the outside, mm. tender on the inside. That's I can see why the girls like that. Can I just say that maybe that's one of my favorite meals we had? It's so good. simple. I mean, this is nothing special. Right. But there are people who tell me, oh, I mess gravy up all the time. This is a good white gravy like, yeah, you, it is. like you get at a country restaurant. Mm -hmm. The cowboy beans are just ridiculous. Amazing. Now we're going out later. I got to clear this hill off up here. We've got trees down everywhere from the ash blight. The ash borers have come in and killed right. all the trees. We have cedar trees that have been cut down that left the tops all over the place. When you know that you got to burn some calories and you, you want to just <laughs> load up with carbs That's and go, the thing to eat. I'm tell you what, you can't beat this right here. Those are so sweet and And it's wonderful. pretty. It looks pretty. Colors. I like the colors. Let's mention that like a lot of things that we've talked about, like the lard and some grandma's pickles that we put right. in the last couple recipes, we've already done them mm -hmm. on the show. So where would you go if you wanted those recipes? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. You do not? Yes, I do. I do too. Okay. <laughs> you know, I was talking to Tim Sloan last time, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Sometimes we forget as we're cooking, we don't right. add or look at the measurements. People need that. If he or she does. He said he does. He, he goes, goes on you go, he I go, because it. sometimes right. I forget. Once I get it just right, right. I gotta, you know, you want to make sure because sometimes you forget. And the exact measurements I forget, so. Also. We love our Facebook friends. If you wanted to get on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page, it's really hard, isn't it? No. What you just do you go in there and you hit like. Boom. That's You're it. In. And on the conversations, we try to talk as much as we can. Sometimes we're on the road for a while, but we will get back to right. you. And you know what? That's about it. Other than eating this beautiful plate of country food. And I'm starving. It's all about good times. Good friends. And really good eats. We'll see you next week on Ooh. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Smack it. Good. Oh, I could eat all these. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.